So I've been wanting to make a video for a little while now about walking through how I make videos, essentially, how I edit videos from start to finish. There's several different kinds of videos that I do. I do some videos where it's voiceover work and I have a bunch of B-roll over it, and then there's some where it's screen capture stuff, and I kind of narrate my way through the video. Uh, that's what this one's going to be. We're going to be uh, editing a shortcuts tips video on using Base64. That video should already be out by now. Uh, but basically, I'm just going to walk you through my editing process of how to edit a video, and we're going to do a few different things. So the first thing I do is I always go into the Files app, and the way I do my folder structure is always the On My iPad section, LumaFusion, User Media, and then I create a folder for the project in here. Why I do this is so that LumaFusion doesn't re-import my media back in, basically creating duplicate files and taking up extra hard drive space. Uh, as you can see, I only have 71 gigs available. I use a ton of hard drive space. I have the 512 gig uh, iPad. I probably have a bunch of stuff in release and recently deleted that I need to take care of. I'll deal with that another time. Um, but I built my project structure, folder structure in here. Uh, we're gonna use this one right here using Base64 in shortcuts. This one doesn't have a lot of media. That's why I thought this would be a really good video for me to start off with and showing how I edit. If you guys like these videos, if you want me to do more of them, I can do a more complex edit later on, but I thought this would be a good first edit to show. So uh, we're gonna take a look at video. So I have an A roll and B roll folder. Again, there's not a lot of media in this one, so there's not much there. And then music for this kind of video, normally you edit uh, to the music for like you know music videos and like really epic b-roll sequences and stuff you edit to the music for these kind of narrated videos i like to find music that fits it uh i don't want the i don't want to have to work my narration my story around the music i want the music to fit that so music is something i add last to these kinds of videos so we have my a roll my b roll and then we have some templates and stuff that are in this preset folder that we're going to use as well so let's go ahead and jump into luma fusion Let's go ahead and create a project. That's this button right down here. So we're going to do um, base64 and shortcuts. I don't ever really use the exact name that uh, I'm going to end up using on YouTube because I end up changing the titles a dozen and a half times. So I just want a good descriptor. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to use frame rate 23.98 frames per second at a 16 by 9 landscape. So 23.98 is because I use a Canon camera and that's what it shoots at. Uh, 16 by 9 is because the aspect ratio I do. You can absolutely change that if you want. Uh, shoot edit at whatever aspect ratio your camera shoots in. Mine just happens to be 23.98. So just make sure you look at those settings on your camera when you're picking this stuff right down here. So we're gonna go ahead and hit new project. Let's go ahead and jump into the using base 64 shortcuts video and then do video and then we'll go into A roll. So we're gonna add this clip right here. This is just a screenshot of my iPad. Honestly, kind of boring without anything added in there. So if you've seen some of these videos I've done in the past, you know I have some templates. So let's go into the presets folder here and then we'll do images. And then we're gonna grab this, uh, this, this one right here. This is why I also keep my preset folder in that same user media folder. It doesn't have to re-import anything. It's just there, I can quickly add it. So as you can see, we have this template that I've made and it has a wood table background. It has the frame of the iPad and a green screen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this image right here and place it right in there. Uh, so this is just an image I made. I believe I either made this one in Pixelmator or Affinity Photo, but either way I made it right on the iPad. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and come in here we're gonna go over to the effects and then we're gonna come up here to this uh, top one right here, the key, and we're gonna select green screen. Uh, so you can see right here, we can start to see things come through. It's kind of faded on the edges. So let's go into this other guy, this other clip right here. We're just gonna double click on it and we're gonna load the effects editor right here. We're gonna come over here. Uh, we're gonna come over to this first one, I'm sorry, to position and we're just going to slide the X axis kind of get it centered with that, and then we're gonna scale it down. I know it needs to be right at 90. So um, I've done this before, and I just know that's where it needs to be. It's kind of hard to do it with the mouse, but I'm trying to show you guys uh, where the where I'm touching and tapping the whole time. So uh, needs to be right around there. Uh, so we know that's probably about good. So let's back out of this and we can kind of see 
Uh, it looks good. Maybe we need to shift it down towards the top, but that looks pretty good to me. You can kind of see the edges are kind of, mm, we need to work on those a bit. But first, so we don't have to keep doing this every single time we do this video, let's save this stuff right here to a preset. So what we could do is we can hit the star icon right here, and I'm just going to call it iPad green position. Nothing's fancy, nothing special. I know what that means. We're just going to hit that star button right there. And then now if you come over here, we have the iPad green position. I also have one for the iPhone that I've already made as well. So there's a bunch of things you could do in here. You can change the position, the size. Um, there's a cropping option. So you can like crop the left side in. You can crop it out. You can keyframe. You can do all sorts of interesting things in here. We'll get to all that more in just a bit. Um, blending, things like that. We'll, we'll do a few other things here in a bit. But let's go back into our image template right up here. And let's make this green, this effect right here. So we're going to go into the chroma key effect. We're going to make it a little better. So let's turn the saturation down, not too much. But you see how it was up right there, and it was kind of making those edges on the iPad look really bad. Let's bring that down so the edges look a little bit better. Uh, let's bring uh, the hue was fine right there. And then let's bring the balance. Okay, right about there. So we still have that edge there that I'm not super happy with, to be honest. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and turn off this track right here so we can hit that I. Turn off this guy. Get the drop effect right there. Set it to that. Okay, so that we'll turn that back on. Turn this guy back on. It made it a little bit better, but not great. Still, let's see if we can make it slightly better by adjusting the hue. No, that's no good. Let's put the hue down there. Okay, that makes it slightly better, but that really messes up those edges. There you go. Okay, I think that's about as good as we're going to get it right there. That's that's. Kind of sometimes when you deal with these things and like using chroma keys and green screen, you're not going to get it perfect uh, unless you are really, really just dedicated to that. Luma Fusion is a great utility. It's not After Effects. It's not uh, Maya. It's not a special effects editor. It's not meant to be something that goes above and beyond in creating Star Wars level special effects. So, but that's good enough for me. I can see those edges, but honestly, I don't think anyone else, if I wasn't pointing them out in this video, I don't think anyone else would ever notice. So uh, that's gonna be good enough. So what I do now is I just shrink, I just pinch all the way, and then I just drag this all the way to the edge. So the big thing to know about any video editor is the keyboard shortcuts. It'll speed up your editing a lot. So if you hold down the command key on your iPad, it'll show you all the keyboard shortcuts. So you can kind of come through here and check them out. Uh, if you hit the up key, it'll go to the last cut. Command B will make a cut wherever the line is, and the command X will delete whatever uh, selected media was there. So now we have this perfect Timeline. Okay, so that's pretty good right there, but I want to add something to this area right here. This just looks bland to me. So we're going to add my logo. But that is too big, in the wrong position, and so many different things. So we're going to come back to frame and fit. We're going to scale it down, move the position to right about there. X, still too big. So that's about where I'd want it, but let's rotate it a little bit. Uh, right about, just, just so that it's slightly off. Okay, so it's, that's good right about there, but let's make it look kind of like a coffee stain. So let's go into blending and go into blend mode. So this kind of basically changes how layers work with each other. This is how they kind of reflect off of each other. You can do different things here. Uh, we're going to go to... Uh, past it. We're going to go to soft light. 
Soft light is kind of my favorite. Uh, it kind of makes things look like it either is burned in or stained in on like wood backgrounds. So it kind of gives it that coffee stained look. If I had more time and more abilities and skills in Photoshop, I could make it even look better with Photoshop and make it look like a true coffee stain. Uh, but that takes time. And honestly, it's not that big of a detail. Uh, I think that looks pretty good for the way it does a lot of times you have to judge when it comes to video editing and stuff like this is it worth the time so i could spend an hour making that thing look amazing on here but is it worth an hour to make that look this this little logo look you know 10 percent better because right now to me that's about 90 percent of the way there uh i could spend you know an hour on it making that 10 percent better but is that 10 percent actually worth it so i'm gonna say no because i think that looks pretty good as it is so i'm i'm happy with that i like i like that it's kind of rotated to the side i like that it looks like a coffee stain i like that it's lined up with the ipad um so i'm pretty happy with that all right so now we have this our whole clip right here typically what i do now is i just do a watch through so basically i just start playing the clip so sometimes when you're sometimes and i just start making cuts in there so at the beginning i know i make a few mistakes right here when you're building shortcuts you want to embed templates mm, no okay so i know i made a few mistakes right there so what i can do is i can hit command b and it it made a cut where that selected clip was. It made a cut. If I hit it again, it makes a cut throughout that whole line. And I can select this bottom clip here and hit Command X, and it deletes that whole thing. So the way LumaFusion works is these lines are connecting to the base clip. So if there's something connecting to the base clip and you select the base clip and delete it, whatever's connected to it also gets deleted. Uh, the base clip snaps to... Uh, snaps right next to where it goes so if i was to drag something down here it snaps right there i can switch the way that works i can hit this arrow right here and things become a bit more free form so now it doesn't snap uh as much it really depends on how you like to edit uh, because luma fusion is missing a feature that i would really like which is the ability to select multiple clips at once and be able to move things around I keep the snap feature on. I edit a bit more in a straight line. Typically, people edit all over the places. There, there's not really a, a select way. They don't do start to finish or things like that. Because of the way LumaFusion is built, I just find editing from start to finish better. And usually the way my stuff works, I have all my clips and things ready to go. If I don't have a clip or something ready to go by the time I uh, film something, I can come down here to this plus button right here and select blank clip. And I just insert a blank clip. And then what you can do when you're all done, you can just drag a clip right on top of it and it'll replace it. If the clip's longer or shorter, it'll ask you if you just want to... Uh, uh, shrink, make the clip fit the, the clip that it's replacing or use its already existing time. So it's, it's a pretty cool feature, um, but you just kind of got to keep that in mind when you're editing. The other thing I do too typically is if I have video clips that I don't want uh, the audio from, I just come over here and mute the track. These two, since they're images, there's no audio associated with them. So I'm not really worried about that, but you can just come over and mute them. LumaFusion with version 2.0 got the ability to support six uh uh, six tracks all together so six video tracks and then six audio tracks as well so that's quite a bit and then you could actually reuse some of the video tracks as audio tracks if you want so if you are just editing podcasts and you're used to editing in luma fusion you can edit your podcast right in luma fusion you don't have to use something like ferret if you don't want to i recommend ferret because there's a lot of specific audio features in there that you could really use and it could be really handy so I'm going to go through and just kind of play and make some cuts. Um, one thing that does happen, so with my audio interface, it only records the left track. It's, it's a mono audio interface because I just use one mic. So what you can do is you can double tap on it and then come in here to the audio feature and then go to configuration and where you do channels, you just do fill from the left. And then now it'll start playing in stereo. Sometimes when you're building shortcuts, you want to have templates the other thing or you files can that the shortcut can call. The other thing you can do, and I'm going to be trying not talk over myself when it does the audio part, is you can bump up the, the audio right here. So let's bump it up to three. Oh. A lot of times what people do is they have the template download from a server. So that looks pretty good right there. You kind of want to keep it in this light green area right here. It's okay if it bumps up into the yellow every once in a while. You don't want it to be consistently in the yellow. You want it to be in this light green area. If it's in the red, that means it's clipping and your audio is 
basically no good. You're probably going to have to re-record because uh, maybe there's some ways to recover clipping audio, but I've never been able to do it successfully. Um, so make sure it's in the light green area. If it's in the yellow, feel free to bring it down. If it's in the dark green, feel free to bring it up. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Um, I brought it up about three decibels. That's perfect. So let's go through and start making some cuts. I'm going to kind of show you guys how I do a few of these, and then I will speed up the process so you don't have to watch me go through a almost six minute video doing this. And see, I made a mistake right there. So let's take a look at how I recover from that mistake. But to be completely honest, so I started the to, be, to completely honest part. So let's go back here. Else, I'm probably not explaining, probably not explaining it very well. But to be complete, so that there's the beginning of the to completely honest. So let's just make a cut right there. Go back there, make a full cut. So I have this whole section right here. So again, I can just hit Command X and it deletes it. Back to files. I'm probably not explaining it very well. But but to be completely honest, you don't. So I've got two butts in there. So let's uh, let's make another cut. Probably not explaining it very well, but to be completely honest, and that's kind of a rough audio cut. I can kind of probably clean that up a little bit by cutting this section off very well. But to be completely honest, you don't really Sounds need to know the crazy technical. But to be, oh, looks like I, I messed up again. But to be completely honest, you don't. explaining it very well but to be completely honest you don't really need to know the weird details and the technical aspects of how it works you just need to know how to use it so let me so that's how i recover from a cut so i'm going to go ahead and basically just jump through the rest of this cutting it all up um, i essentially just do this whole pro process i just listen through the whole video watch through the whole video find any mistakes usually in these kind of videos i'm pretty good at recognizing when i make a mistake uh, recording the video and then I'll just go back and do it again. I try and recover it and try and make it look um, flush so that it doesn't actually look like there was a cut. My whole goal is to look like I'm I'm doing this in one take essentially. Uh, I'm not trying to be deceptive when I say I'm trying to do it in one take. Everyone makes mistakes. I make mistakes. But personally, I find videos where there's obvious cuts um, to fix mistakes a bit annoying because if you take just a little bit of time in the edit or a little bit of time when recording, you can usually cover those mistakes up. Not always, and it's not the end of the world if you don't, but usually if you just take a little bit of extra time, you can, you can cover those mistakes up, and you can just make your video look a bit nicer. It, it's nothing you know, against people that don't do that, or it's nothing against people that do do it or anything like that. It's just, just take a little bit of time in your edit or when you're recording and you can, you can recover from those mistakes. So like back here, you don't, you wouldn't even know if you weren't watching this video, you wouldn't even know there was a mistake. Not right explaining there. it very well, but to be completely honest, you don't, it flows perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the rest of this video doing that same thing, just watching through, cutting it. And then uh, I'll kind of show you what the timeline looks like after that. Okay, so we got our video all chopped up. Now, there's actually not that many edits. I had one mistake here where uh, I tried to recover it. It was uh, already in the new shortcuts window area here. So what I did was I took a frame and I duplicated it a bunch of times. So a single frame right here, and it's completely duplicated, and it just looks good. So here, I'll play it for you guys so you can see. Garbage code is on our clipboard now. Okay, so let's go ahead and you would not never know the difference. So I messed up right there in the filming, and I was able to recover it. So that's kind of what I was talking about, just taking a little bit of extra time. I could have just made a cut, and it could have been in the new shortcut area, then cut back to here, and then end up in the new shortcut area again. And it would have just kind of been like, wait, what's happening? But I took a little bit of extra time, and I just made the, the cut a little bit nicer with a really hacky way of an edit, but you know what? It works. So uh, that's that. The one thing, the other thing I did is I put a marker. So you can use the M key on your keyboard to create a marker. Uh, and you could just call, you know, and you can write like something like cut here. Um, and you could put like uh, add a reminder to add a cut there or something. But I added this reminder to put the B-roll here. Uh, I thought this was just kind of a good place to put it. So let's go ahead and do that and I'll show you how I kind of deal with that. So let's go into the using base 64 video B-roll. And we have a couple of... Uh, 
of clips right here we can look at. So right here I'm talking so I'll about put this shortcut and I'll So I'm talking about the journal shortcut right here. So let's use that's this clip right here. This is the journal shortcut. Uh, these handles right here, these are your in and out points. So you can drag these or you can use um, you can use like the I key and the O key to set your in and out points. Typically, I kind of just like to, I like to drag them just because I can move through it a little bit faster that way. Um, and then I can kind of see what's going on. So one other thing too to keep in mind is this cl these clips right here are shot at 60 frames per second. So I like to shoot my B-roll at 60 frames per second and slow it down. It makes things just smoother, gives it kind of that nice B-roll look and things like that. So uh, it's very, very popular on YouTube right now to do things like that, to either shoot at your B-roll at 60 frames per second 120 frames per second or even 240 frames per second just kind of depending on what your camera supports uh, so i'm just going to put that clip right here right on that cut you'll also notice that it's very washed out so i shoot in what's called log on my canon eos r that basically means the whites and the blacks can't ever clip uh, so you get this very washed out look so you have to actually come in and color correct it a lot so we'll come in here to the color effects page or we'll add the original first thing i do is bump up the contrast a bunch and then kind of the brightness a little bit to wash it out okay and then let's add some color in there with saturation not too much add a little bit of vibrance and then bring the highlights down just a little bit there's not really any highlights in that video okay but we're going to bump up the reds and we're going to bump up the or we're going to bump up the yellows or tone down the blues whatever you want to call it and that looks good right there that just kind of gets a nice balance right there and then i can come over here to the LUTs. so i have a few presets so there there are some ones right in here but there's some ones that i bought i believe this is the peter mckinnon package if i remember correctly um you can apply all sorts of different LUTs. you can kind of tell right off the bat just applying a lot like does not look good what you got to do is you got to use this blend tool right here i blend to about 80 percent, somewhere between 70 and 80 percent Personally, that's what I find the best. The te That teal and orange look is probably one of my favorites, the one I use the most, but it's a little too much teal on this one. So let's try clean and tidy. Uh, let's see what kind of look. That basically doesn't add much of anything. Uh, noir. I like that. It kind of it kind of takes out that teal, that too much like blue that it has just because that's, you know, it's a computer screen and things like that. Uh, let's see fade out. I think we're going to go with the noir. Yeah, I think we're going to go with that. So, like, if I went, like, full on 100%, it's just black and white. Like, But you know what? We're just going to take a little bit of that color out using this, and that looks pretty good to me. Um, so now we can come over here uh, and do that. But it's still running at 60 frames per second. So we need to come over here to the speed option right here and slow it down. See where this bar is right down here? That's what it's supposed to be playing back at. So that that is setting it to run at 23.98 frames per second, what we set our project to earlier. You can change that if you want. You can come down here to the settings and change like the project frame rate and the project aspect ratio. So if you want to make changes later, you don't have to start a whole new project. Um, there's a whole bunch of preferences in here to play with. Um, ducking, I some people like ducking some people don't i prefer manual ducking i i it's just the way i i i've never had automated ducking before and it's just i don't know anyways so there's a lot of things you can come in here and play with let's go back into this project so we set it at about 40 uh 40 percent right there of the actual clip will make this run at 23.98 frames per second so we can see that now okay so that looks pretty good uh so let's play it back so now it's an 11 second clip which is way too you'd want to use it i'll put this shortcut and i'll put the shortcut to encoding the base 64 encoder in the description below so you can check those two out um and you can play around with them I okay so right about there's a good spot to cut uh so we have that clip right now let's add our second set of b-roll so this was our clip for getting the uh, template that we encoded the original base 64 encode right here. So let's go ahead and add this right here to our timeline. Uh, and then what we could do is we could take these settings right here from this clip, everything but speed. I really wish the speed would transfer over. So we can take all of our color corrections and LUTs. We can, what I do is I just hit option A and you get this little menu at the bottom, hit copy, select the next clip, hit option A again, and then hit paste and it just applies those. 
So that looks pretty good right there. But again, we have to come in here, change the speed so it runs at the proper frame rate. And then let's just play that back. I highly recommend if you're building shortcuts with templates, use Base64. It's totally worth it. It'll save you a ton of time, and it just makes your shortcut that much faster to run, too. So that looks about good right there to me. So let's add a cut. And it just makes your shortcut that much faster to run, too. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. Hmm. It cuts off the great day there. I got a little button happy, a press happy when I hit the stop recording button. But, uh... That's okay. So that's kind of it. That's our that's our that's our rough cut right there. Um, that's pretty much a completed video, to be honest. Uh, the one thing we need to do is we need to add music. So I do use a service called Epidemic Sounds. Um, it is a pay for service, so I'm not going to show you all the ins and outs of that because it's probably against their terms of service. Uh, but it is the music service that I like the most. I've p used free services and I've used paid for services. This is the only music service that I've started since I started using it. I've like every single video since I started using it has had a song from it. I've always found stuff I'm really happy with. It's such a great stuff. I'll link to it below. They sponsor a lot of other YouTubers. This is not a sponsorship or anything like that. It's just a service I really like. Uh, that, and I'm making a video about editing videos, so I figured I, I'd, um, you know, talk about their stuff. But I'm going to go through their service right now, find a song I like. Basically, all I do uh, is just put it at the bottom. I'll show you guys that in just a second once I find a song I like. So I'm going to go find a song, and we'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and made a music folder, and I found a song I like that I think will fit well with this. Uh, it perfect. It actually is a good length too, so we don't have to duplicate it or anything. Sometimes, if you do need to duplicate it, there's obvious cuts in, in songs that are made for like um, ro royalty-free sites that either you pay for or not like that. There's a lot of times that they know you're gonna have to loop the song, so there's a there's a point in there that you can make a cut and then you can connect the song again. Uh, Epidemic Sounds is great for that. You can even even get like like the stems so like the individual parts of the song and like you can remix it and make it your own and things like that um there may be a limit to that i never do that but that's because i don't really have any musical talent and the people that are making this is so are so much better than me that i just i'm like blown away by the stuff they make so i don't even do this so i made a folder for music uh one of my my very first film teacher he taught me just always have your stuff organized even if it's just an individual file that way you always know where things are so I'm going to go ahead and dra drag it down here to this audio track. I know with Epidemic Sounds, we need to make it about negative 29, 28, negative 30, somewhere in that range. So let's go ahead and play it. Sometimes when you're building shortcuts, you want to have templates or files that the shortcut can call. A lot of times what people do is they have the template download from a server or a file share like Dropbox or Google Drive. But you can actually embed. So that's pretty good to me. Uh, we got some part hanging off here at the end. Um, so what I like to do at the very end of my videos, we'll come to the very end and we'll add a title. We'll hit main title button right there and we'll come in here. So I have some presets right here. So you can come in here and create your own title and stuff like that, but I actually have some presets. So I'm going to hit edit on iPad pro. And this is kind of how ever since I've been using LumaFusion, this is how I've edited it, ended every single one of my videos. And then we're going to hit the, the title again. And then I always make this last one seven seconds right here. And then this is the thank you for watching. And then this is where I put like my uh, every YouTuber does it. This is where I put my little subscribe button and like the next video that's recommended for you that YouTube thinks you should watch kind of thing. So um, I usually put those right above that. So I have a thank you for watching my Twitter handle stuff right there. Uh, seven seconds right there. And it looks like there's a good spot too to cut this. So let's listen through here really quick. Yeah, so we're gonna make that cut right there. Yeah. And I'm gonna do something I don't normally do, but I'm gonna make that slightly longer just so it goes well with the cut. So uh, I added six frames to it, but it'll go better with ending the video with the music and its down point. So that, that'll work out a lot better. So that's basically it. That's a really simple edit from start to finish. Uh, I. You can kind of see how I went through. There's a few tricks that I use. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Leave them in the comments below. Uh, if there's enough of them or whatever, I will try and do another one of these videos, maybe a little bit more advanced, maybe a little more, more in detail. I know this video is already long enough as it is. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you're here already, uh, have a great day.